Hey guys, today we're going to learn about the concept of power. Power really is nothing much more than energy per time, whether that be potential energy per time, or kinetic energy per time, or even something like uh, heat per time, right? Something like that. Um, any of those various things, that's what power is going to be related to. Um, so a lot of the time you'll see it for things like energy use um, or energy production, uh, but for that matter it could just as easily be for something like how much work is done in a given amount of time by something like an elevator. So the unit for power is the watt, which is a joule per second. All right. So if we put that into the context of, oh, I don't know, something like gravitational potential energy, I know this is going way back here. Well, if you have oops, something like, say, an elevator that lifts you up a particular height in a given amount of time, the power of that elevator would correspond to the rate at which your potential energy changes, which might be something like, well, if I take height divided by time, that would be, say, your upwards velocity. Okay, or it could be something where you're talking about, say, the uh, rate of change in the kinetic energy of a car. Okay, and so that would be very appropriate for, say, talking about like a sports car, right? How much horsepower does it have? Well, that's going to correspond to the rate at which its kinetic energy changes versus time. Now the symbol I'm going to use for energy for the rest of this presentation is going to be U, really for no particular reason. I could have used any of the others like kinetic energy or heat and it would have been just fine. Rearranging that equation we get that U or energy is power times time. Um, which should make sense to you since we said energy is measured in joules and since power is, it could be measured in watts, which is a joule per second. If I take a joule per second times a second, that gives me joules. But really, if I take any unit of power times any unit of time, it's going to give me a particular amount of energy. So you are probably at least somewhat familiar with the unit of horsepower. Now, now what's, what's a horsepower, horsepower anyway? anyway? Well, apparently a British horsepower is this. Uh, I tried to look up what an American horsepower is, since I've never heard it called anything other than just plain old horsepower. And um, apparently a British horsepower and American horsepower are the same thing, so I, I don't seem to think there's a distinction. Unless I'm wrong. Excuse me if I am. All right, now, a horsepower day, it's a unit of power times a unit of time. That would be a particular amount of energy. I suppose it would correspond to the amount of work that a horse could do in one day, okay, or a one horsepower motor for that matter. All right, fine, but the point is that if you take a power unit times a time unit, you're going to get some amount of work or energy. So it doesn't matter what kind of a power unit you have and what kind of a time unit, it's going to be an amount of energy. Now, a much more common energy unit than the horsepower day, which frankly nobody uses horsepower days, is the kilowatt hour. Uh, now, if you're thinking to yourself, kilowatt hours, I've never heard of this. Well, probably you have, uh, but you may not have seen it before if you don't, say, pay the electric bill. Okay, so in terms of joules, which is a much more familiar unit to us, what exactly is a kilowatt hour? Well, a kilowatt is a thousand watts. Okay, fine. An hour is 3,600 seconds, right? 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour. And since a watt is a joule per second, those seconds units are going to cancel, giving us... Whoa, 3,600,000 joules? That's one kilowatt hour. So how big really is a kilowatt hour? I mean, in terms of your electrical consumption, a kilowatt hour is kind of not that big of a deal, all things considered. 
Um, 3,600,000 joules of energy, though, is kind of a lot. If you had that much kinetic energy, I mean, wow, you would really be moving, okay? But you can understand maybe why they don't charge your bill from the electric company in joules. So here is a sample electric bill from the energy company. Um, I just wanted you to see uh, where the, uh, the kilowatt hours is on there. So here we have uh, current usage, right, from this hypothetical uh, John Jay customer. And let's see, over here we have the uh, amount that he is being charged for, um, well, for, for using 453 kilowatt hours. And as you can see, the rate here is 13.588 cents per kilowatt hour. That's really not all that much money, all things considered. But really, electricity is incredibly cheap. So even though uh, this guy used 453 kilowatt hours, it's not really an outrageous energy usage, um, and it's not actually all that expensive. Still, you could imagine that it would be rather alarming to have on your bill uh, the number of joules of energy that you used, even if it was being billed at a very small rate. And of course, if it was 13.588 cents per joule, I think you would go bankrupt in very, very short order. All right, so now would be a great time for us to look at uh, example six, in which we run a 1200 watt microwave for one minute. Uh, and in case you're curious, yeah, 1,200 watts is, uh, that could be a microwave. Mine happens to be 1,000. I looked on the label. Um, there are 1,500 watt microwaves, but 12,000 is not unreasonable. So first thing we got to do with each of these numbers here is figure out what are they. And if you're thinking to yourself, watts is power and minutes is time, that's absolutely correct. So what we're being asked to figure out now is energy. All right, so if you feel like you know how to do this, you should probably pause me and see if you can forge ahead and solve it. Um, if not, um, keep watching and I'll continue. Energy is power times time. But depending on whether we're doing part A or part B, the units that we plug in for that power and that time are going to be different. I can multiply any power times any time unit and it will be energy, but if I multiply them together right now, what I would get would be watt minutes, and no one uses watt minutes. Kilowatt hours is a thing, as we discussed, and uh, I suppose a watt second is a thing because that's a joule, right? A watt second would be a joule per second times a second, which is just joules, but no one says watt minutes. So that means for either one, some conversion is going to happen. In part A, it asks for the energy use in kilowatt hours. So that means we'll need to take our power and convert it to kilowatts, and our time and convert it to hours. Since kilo means 1,000, we just move our decimal point over three spots, which gives us 1.2 kilowatts. Uh, and I went and wrote uh, one minute as one sixtieth of an hour. Uh, and you could put it as a decimal, but it's, the math actually works out pretty well here. Whereas if you write one sixtieth as a decimal and then round, you're going to get some stupid answers. Whatever. This works out pretty nicely, though. To exactly 0 0.02 kilowatt hours. All right, so at 11 cents per kilowatt hour, running your microwave for one minute basically costs nothing. That's far less than one penny, pretty sure. Yeah, that's not very much money at all. Now, part B wants us to express the answer in joules. So we can use that same equation, energy is power times time, but we're going to have to do some different converting. So if you want the answer in joules, watts is just fine to plug in for power. We can just take that and put that on in there. But what units should we put in for time? All right, give that a think. And the answer is, that's right, we want one minute converted to seconds, which, okay, there we are. 
All right, for a result of 72,000 joules. Okay. Well, now you know everything you need to know about power to do the homework. So good luck on the homework, guys, and I will see you on the Internet.